So, yeah, hello everyone. Um, my name is Tony Martinez de Loyo, and I work for World Sensing. And I'm here to talk about how we use APIs at World Sensing to build innovative industrial Internet of Things applications. So, APIs are key at World Sensing for us. So, let me first uh, show you the agenda. I'd like you to understand a bit about what we do at World Sensing and what does it mean, this industrial Internet of Things. Then I will move a bit to the technology we use, what is the stack and architecture. Then I'd like to show you a couple of use cases on how we use APIs in, in IIoT. And then I'll just come to a summary. So let's get started. World Sensing is a scale-up company from Barcelona. We are located here in Barcelona, but we operate worldwide. And what we do, we, do is, uh, we use Internet of Things for the monitoring of mobility, parking, security, traffic in major cities all around the world. We also, uh, our products and our solutions are also used in construction sites. And we collect data from sensors all over the world to protect critical infrastructures. And in, we work in mines as well. So some highlights are, for instance, that we work in the purple rail line extensions in Los Angeles, as well as in the rail line extension in Washington, D.C. We work in the tunnel monitoring of Grand Paris Metro in France. And we were also in Melbourne, for instance, for the Metro line extension in there. So these are just some big numbers for you to have the idea of how uh, we have come along these 10 years and how our technology is being used. So, I'll go a bit more into detail on our portfolio. These are, you can see the sensors that we develop and the software solutions that we develop in this portfolio slide. But first of all, I'd like to make it clear what is the kind of applications we work for. So I said we work for industrial IoT, and this industrial is key, because what we do is not some kind of wearables, some things that you can just charge every 24 hours that measure some uh, activity tracking or something like that. But what we do is for the industry, for mines, for construction sites. And these businesses uh, are, in the, are in the transition right now from like, having the, the, the worker be deployed in there and read some measurements, write them down, then go back to the office and upload them into a spreadsheet and stuff like that into using technology and using Internet of Things. So our products need to have super long batteries that can last up to 10 years. They need to transfer the data wirelessly because they are installed in some remote locations sometimes, like as I said, in mines or construction sites. And they need to be very robust. So just an overview, we started 10 years ago with FastPark, which is a parking sensor that is telling you whether there is a, a car or not in a parking spot. We also have some products for earthquake monitoring. And then we have load sensing, which is kind of our key product, which is used in construction and mining. It's both a sensor, it's a node that transmits the data wirelessly. And it also comes with the, with the software suite for you to access this data, read it, and so on. And of course, you can guess these communications are done via APIs at some point. Then we have BitCarrier, which is used for traffic management. And all of these were physical sensors that we built and developed end-to-end -end here in Barcelona, from the hardware to the firmware assembly, and then the software that comes with it. And then a couple of years ago, or one year ago, we launched uh, OneMind, which was a purely software solution. And this solution, the idea was that it was aggregating all sorts of data sources. So it could be our sensors, but it could be any other sensors. And again, here I'm going to tell you about uh, how we did that with APIs a bit later. So, yeah, now I'll, I'd like to go a bit more into detail on the technology we use and how we are doing it. So in this slide, you can see on the bottom the sensors. I have talked about wall sensing sensors, fast park load sensing at BitCarrier. But we can also, we also connect other sensors, like CCTV cameras or weather stations. And these integrations, we do them via API, typically. And we read this data, and we integrate it into our platform. Uh, on the second level, you can see the systems. And these are the systems that we built from this data. So the data by itself can be overwhelming and doesn't give that much information. But we can, what we do is we build systems with that, like incidents or predictions or anomalies. This means that our platform is kind of 
reading this data, detecting some patterns, and telling you when there is a deviation from the pattern, and then it can act accordingly, like it can trigger an alert, or it can notify uh, someone, or whatever. And then talking about systems, we also integrate via API other systems, like uh, for traffic management, for instance, we can go to a city and install our, our um, hardware, our bit carrier traffic management hardware, but we can also read the data from Google, from Waze, or from TomTom. So we can have these hybrid uh, systems where we use our systems and someone else's sensors, or the other way around. And I think it's important to think or to know that Ideally, everyone is connecting via APIs. APIs are mature enough, have been around for quite a lot, and everyone in this room knows about them. But not everyone is using them so much outside this uh, kind of technological bubble. So we have to understand that there's still many companies using, for instance, like CSV files, because they can be opened easily on, on Microsoft Excel and sending them over FTP servers. And for these cases, we, can also, we also build integration with these other data sources. And for sure, there is a trend for everyone to have an API and to move towards this direction. But one, one has to be realistic as well and know what is the, the status right now in, in the industry. So we do uh, kind of both. And in the end, all these data, all these systems arrive to our business applications. And I'll show you a bit later what we can do with that. Getting a bit more technical, this, uh, in this slide, I'd like to show you, uh, to explain you what is our technolo technological stack. So first of all, I'd like to tell you that we use uh, open source every time we can, and that we use microservice architecture. Because as I said, sometimes our systems are used by third parties and interconnected via APIs, and sometimes it's the other way around. We provide our data to other visualization platforms or whatever. So we need to have something that you can plug and unplug. You can just deploy for this customer, this combination of subsystems, and for this one, this other combination. And microservices, and in particular Docker, Docker Compose, and Kubernetes are very handy for us. Then uh, the thing is that I think many talks here in, in API days have been about how APIs are used for customers. And for us, it's like most of our APIs are for internal communications. So our sensors talking to our systems, our systems talking to each other, and then uh, talking to some third party uh, systems and sensors. So it's not so much uh, client facing, it's more like in between them. It's between machines and machines, or sensors and machines, and so on. So yeah, I'll go from left to right, telling you about like what we have. On the left hand side, we have the data sources. And in case it is our sensors, we do our sensors, we manufacture them, and we write in C and C++ the firmware for them. Then this data is transmitted via LoRa uh, wirelessly. And LoRa, maybe you don't know about it, is a long-range, low-power communication protocol, which is used for IoT because the power consumption is very low. And this allows us to have this kind of super long-lasting batteries and have the sensors deployed in remote locations. Then uh, the data goes via LoRa to our gateways, and these gateways are connected to the internet. This connection can be wired, or it can be via 3G, cell connection, or whatever. And the data can go either to our cloud, like World Sensing's cloud, or it can also go on premises, because as I said, we work in the industrial uh, sector, and many times the companies that we work for, they want to keep the data for themselves, so it's like we can either deploy on premises or in, a pub in, in our private cloud. So we can do both. So once we have the data in our, in our uh, system, then it's when APIs come to place. And we get this data using APIs. And particularly, we use Flask library to build these APIs, because this is a Python library. And we'd like to build almost all of our backend using Python. So Flask is very handy for us, because it's simple to build, but robust enough. And then something that is also key, as some other speakers have also uh, mentioned, is the documentation of the APIs. So as I said, we interconnect our systems with other systems. And also for ourselves, as developers, it's important to know like which endpoint uh, should you use, and what is the data that is expected, and what is the data that you should send, and so on. And for that, we use uh, Swagger. 
Mm, then, okay, we have all this data, we store it into databases, and we use two major databases for time series. So for the data that is uh, changing over time, our sensor data, we use InfluxDB. And for the static data, like what is the network this sensor belongs, and where is it located, and so on and so forth, we use PostgreSQL. And then, okay, we have all this data, but we have to make some sense out of it. And for that, what we do is what we call business rules. And this means kind of uh, saying, okay, if this and that happens, in case this data, if these data sets are telling me that, and these are telling me this other thing, and this also happens, and you just can make you can make it as complex as you want, then trigger an alert or report to someone or uh, send an SMS or send an email or uh, send an HTTP post to some other uh, module. And this we built with uh, Capacitor, which is a library, library that is reading influx data and generating this kind of alerts. And yeah, I'd like, I, there is also an engineering decision when connecting all these subsystems, uh, either to go for uh, HTTP APIs or to use queues. Because queues have this property that you can set them up so that there is data persistency, and unless a message is consumed, the message is going to stay there. But what we tend to do is when the, con when the connection is over the internet, like sensor to uh, system, we use HTTP, HTTP APIs, whereas we use queues uh, internally between our microservices. But there is also the case sometimes that some uh, client, some customer, some third party is asking us to integrate via uh, queues, and we can also do that like externally over the internet, and vice versa. We also use H HTTP APIs uh, between our microservices sometimes in the case that they don't offer, they don't expose uh, a queue. And yeah, then finally, we come to the right hand side. There we have the control panel, and we build this front end with uh, React.js. And we also have some nice dashboards and KPIs evolution over time that I will show you in the use cases part, which we built with uh, Grafana. And yeah, we have some mobile development because our sensors can be configured via Android apps. And yeah, that's just to give you the idea how we cover the whole stack. I won't say that that's easy because we have like many fronts, but yeah, in the end we have the, the whole picture and we are both um, API consumers and API uh, producers. So for us, it's like we, we have the, the whole idea on the system. So this was like the theoretical part. And now let's see a couple of use cases. So I'm going to show you a prototype we built in the innovation department, which is the one I belong to. And for you to understand how this department works. So we are. Uh, what we're doing, we're doing projects within consortiums. These projects can be like funded by European Commission, for instance. And it typically, uh, this, these consortiums are typically like a scale-up or a startup company like us, a university providing some science, um, a big corporation providing like the infrastructure, and so on. So what we do is we build like new use cases for the technology we have already, and. Uh, it's important to communicate these systems, and we tend to do that via APIs. And big part of the success or failure of these projects depends on like how well documented and how stable these AP APIs are. So, in this one, for instance, in this example, what I'm going to show you is how we were reading parking occupation from our fast park sensor and cross correlating that with both uh, geolocation information from smartphones and GPS trackers and payment data. All this data was being consumed via API, and then it was coming to our system, as I showed before, and we applied these business rules. So we call this, this kind of business, business rule enforcement, parking enforcement, because what it was doing basically was comparing like occupation data against payment data, and where there was like the highest level of infringements, there was, uh, this was uh, visualized on the left-hand side in the visualization and, and reporting tools. So you could know where you should deploy the agents instead of having them like go around uh, randomly so that you could maximize the prevention of, of uh, fraud. 
And yeah, that's just one, one prototype we, we built and it gives an example of how we were like integrating three data sources. One of them was ours and two of them were like external APIs and then visualizing it in our platform. But it could be like any other way around. It could be someone else's platform, it could be someone else's sensors and so on and so forth. And now I'll show you how our visualization platform looks like. So this is uh, one mine, this, this product I just told you about. And here you can see the different integrations we have. On the top left, this is the traffic travel times. This is uh, real data from Barcelona, uh, Rondas Highway. And you can see in real time like what is the traffic congestion and also these pop-ups with these KPIs indicators showing how how well is it doing and how does it deviate from what was expected at this given time, at this given day, and so on. We also have integration for uh, agents trackers, like police officers, you could uh, locate them on the map and also extract some KPIs, like what are the, the districts that have the higher number of agents and so on. And also CCTV, CCTV, uh, CCTV cameras and traffic panels. So in case you see there is something going wrong, in case a platform is telling you there is a deviation from the normal trend, you can go and check uh, what does the camera say and validate it and then take some, some action accordingly. So the idea is not only to have the data, but to allow you to have uh, as much control as possible and make as much sense out of it as possible because data can be overwhelming, but if you kind of put it uh, all together, if you mix it well, if you automatically extract some KPIs, it can be very helpful in the end. So I'll come to the summary. What I have told you is how World Sensing is an industrial Internet of Things company and how does it, um, how is it different from my, like the perspective I had about IoT before joining uh, World sensing, which was just these wearables and this kind of things. So what we are doing is working with an industry that is very big, very robust, and that requires these solutions to be robust, uh, long-lasting, and, and well done. So that's what we try to do. I also showed you how we cover the whole stack and how tricky that is, but how we try to do everything from the hardware to the software part and everything that comes in between and also how we are on the both sides of the story. So we are API, uh, API consumers. When we integrate in this platform, I just show you in one mind data from third parties, as well as we are uh, data producers, and we can send via HTTP APIs our data to, to some others. And this gives us the, the whole picture, so to say. And then, OK, all this data, what can we do with it? So we believe that the value it has is the data aggregation and cross-correlation, which in the end can save costs, can, sa uh, can make uh, mines or industries or cities more safe and, and improve like customers' operations. And finally, we like, try to uh, find new use cases for our sensors, for our software. And the thing is that we do all these projects with different partners, and we, we try to keep evolving them to find new use cases. So thank you very much. Here you can find the link to our technological blog. Uh, you can find like many more stories that our engineers, we, we write in there. Like I thought this, uh, this technology was interesting. I'd like to share this, this new feature I, I invented or whatever. So please uh, have a look. And thank you very much. That was it. <laughs>